Ellie Turner is dancing in her room. She is an aspiring fashion designer who lives with her grand Peggy and has been mourning the death of her mother, who appears to Ellie in mirror reflections at times. Peggy shows Ellie a letter she has received informing her she has been accepted into a fashion school in London. Ellie is excited, but Peggy warns her that there are bad men up where she is going. Ellie takes the train to London and is driven to her room. The cab driver makes creepy comments to Ellie, so she gets off at a shop and waits for the man to leave so she can keep walking to her room. She gets there and meets her roommate Joe Costa. Ellie goes out with Joe Costa and her friends, where it is revealed that Ellie's mother died by suicide after a struggle with mental illness. While in the bathroom, Ellie overhears Joe Costa talking trash about her to the other girls. Ellie leaves the pub and walks back to her room, spotting an older man looking her way and smirking. Joe Costa later brings a guy back to her room to hook up with while Ellie tries to sleep. She leaves her room and finds a party going on outside. The only student to befriend her is a young man named John. The next morning, Ellie wakes up late and runs to class where she makes it on time for attendance. Ellie decides to find a place of her own for peace of mind. She finds a room in a home kept by a woman named Ms. Collins. She gives Ellie a set of rules to follow and allows her to stay. Ellie rests for the night. When Ellie gets out of bed, she finds herself somehow in the 1960s. She walks into a venue called Café de Paris and sees her reflection as another young woman named Sandy. Ellie follows Sandy as though she is there watching everything unfold. Sandy wants to be a singer at the venue but is met with unwanted attention by a surly patron. She is told to speak to a man named Jack about being a singer. Sandy meets Jack and is charmed by him. He starts to leave with her when the patron makes rude comments. Jack punches him in the face and runs away with Sandy, kissing her in a phone booth, which is reflected as also happening with Ellie. As Ellie keeps moving, she finds Sandy in her bed, but when she tries to touch her, she wakes up back in the present. At school, Ellie becomes inspired to create a design based on what she saw Sandy wearing. Later that night, Ellie goes back to sleep hoping to wake up in the 60s again. She finds herself as Sandy and Jack get closer, and he brings Sandy to meet the owner of a different venue, the Rialto, so that she can sing for him, performing the song, Downtown. Ellie dyes her hair blonde like Sandy's and continues to work on her dress design, which her teacher seems to like, while Jocasta just mocks her out of pettiness. Ellie later sees the venue where she saw Sandy perform as it appears in the present day. She then goes to a pub to ask for a job. As she heads back to her room, the old man who saw her from the other night follows her and claims to recognize her. Ellie returns to the 60s and goes to the Rialto but finds Sandy is now performing as part of a group of skimpy dressed women dancing as backup for a woman performing as a marionette. As Ellie follows Sandy around a little more, she sees that Jack is more abusive and is telling her that she has to make certain men happy if she wants to make it in the music business. Ellie sees Sandy in the bedroom as a lecherous man approaches her with his pants off. Ellie screams at the man to not touch Sandy, and he appears to hear her, but Ellie wakes up. The experience causes Ellie to rip up the pink dress design she originally drew in class. Ellie continues to get through work and school, in her next trip to the 60s, she sees that Sandy is becoming more jaded and unhappy as Jack her forced her into prostitution and she must service a barrage of horrible men, while she also develops a drug and alcohol problem. She uses fake names like Alex, Lexi, or Anna. Only one man does not take advantage of her and is polite and charming to her. Sandy talks down about herself while Ellie tries to get her attention through the mirror. If you have come this far in the video, please subscribe to this channel to never miss amazing content like this. She manages to smash through the glass and grab Sandy, but she wakes up. John sees that Ellie is looking a bit unwell, so he invites her out to a Halloween party. Joe Costa and her friends see them together and give them drinks. They all start dancing. But in the middle of things, Ellie hallucinates seeing ghoulish visions of the men who took advantage of Sandy, as well as Sandy herself dancing alone. 
John takes Ellie home when he sees her looking bad. They start to kiss and go to her room for fun, but Ellie looks up and sees the ceiling mirror showing Jack attacking Sandy. Ellie starts yelling at him to get off her. She then appears to see Jack stabbing Sandy to death. Ms. Collins overhears the noise and orders John to leave, as one of her rules is not having male visitors. She simply tells Ellie to go to bed. The next day, Ellie apologizes to Ms. Collins about what happened. She asks her if anyone died in her room but Ms. Collins is dodgy about it. Later, Ellie goes to the library to look up murders in the 60s. She begins to hallucinate the ghost men following her around the library, nearly leading her to stab Joe Costa in the face with a pair of scissors. John runs after Joe Costa to explain things while Ellie leaves in a panic. She runs to the police station to report the murder, now believing that the old man is Jack and that he got away with killing Sandy, but the detectives know she has little to go off of. Ellie arrives late for work and finds that the old man is waiting for her. She takes out her phone to try and record a confession out of him, but when she brings up Sandy, the man says Alex killed Sandy. Ellie runs after the man, but he gets hit by a car on the street and dies. Ellie returns home and makes plans to return home with her grandmother. Ms. Collins gives Ellie tea and her mail. One letter is addressed to Ms. Collins, revealing her name to be Alexandra, which is what Sandy told Jack her name was short for. Ms. Collins reveals that someone did die in Ellie's room, her. She was Sandy. After enduring all the abuse in her life, she let her life as Sandy die when she stabbed Jack to death. She later got revenge on all the men who abused her by murdering them. Ms. Collins then reveals that she poisoned Ellie's tea and will make it look like a suicide. John then comes looking for Ellie, who regains enough strength to warn John to run. Ms. Collins stabs him while Ellie tries to run upstairs, seeing the younger Sandy attacking her. Downstairs, a fire starts and begins spreading. Ellie locks herself in her room where the spirits of Sandy's victims break through the floors and walls, begging Ellie to kill Ms. Collins. When she finally breaks in, she sees her reflection as Sandy and realizes she has become just as much of a monster as the men who hurt her. She tries to slit her throat but Ellie stops her and tries to help her. Ms. Collins chooses to stay and die in the fire while letting Ellie go. Some time later, Ellie presents her work in a fashion show and she once again sees her mother's reflection smiling at B.E.R. As Peggy and John come to congratulate her, Ellie sees Sandy's reflection in the mirror waving at her. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comment section below which movie you want us to recap next. As always until the next time.